Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh, no, don't sit down. No, we got to stand up a little while longer. Stand up a little while longer. Uh-uh, uh-uh. He's faithful, y'all. Ooh, he's so faithful, y'all. Because if you're alive right now, that's already a testament of just how faithful he really is. Your mind is still on. You're in your right mind. And you're in the house of God tonight. That right there is a blessing. That is an extreme blessing. Let me show you why that is so important. Look around you right now. Go ahead and look around you. All right? Now, most of you most likely are sitting uh, next to a chair that's probably empty. Amen? All right. Every chair in this building, that represents a soul that should be here. It's a soul that's supposed to be in this place. That's supposed to be in the house of God. You are an anomaly. And I'm not me, it ain't supposed to happen. You're not supposed to be in this place. You know the old you, man. Come on now, let's be real with one another, man. We shouldn't even be in this place. We shouldn't have this understanding to even have a desire to want to be in the house of God. What is that? What is that? How many people know this walk is not easy? This walk is not an easy walk. Matter of fact, it's a hard walk. And it get real hard sometimes to walk this thing out, to consistently to keep on going in the midst of what you're seeing. That's a hard thing. So it is a miracle that you're here tonight. Because the chair next to you shouldn't be one of your family members next to you over here that you've been playing for, been praying for, been fasting for, been asking God, please save them. Please bring them in the house of God. God, please let me give them the antidote. And just sometimes, don't it just feel like, man, if you could just sit that person down. Because you got the answer. You got the solution. You know what the key to fixing their life is. You know it. That's why you're here tonight. That child, that wife, that husband, that cousin, that brother, that sister, that mama, that daddy, you've been praying for, they are supposed to be next to you tonight for real. But you hear you and you're representing them. You represent them. This walk is really difficult, straight up. When I think about prayer, prayer is hard. We got prayer over here every noonday, 12, 15, and just a few people. I'm not knocking you for not being there. I'm just saying, this walk is hard. It's hard to pray. Straight up. It's hard to do that. It's not an easy thing. We come here on Sunday. It's full here on Sunday, and that's cool and that's good. But look at your neighborhood. You came to church, but did anybody else in your neighborhood come to a church? Most probably not. This walk is hard. And sometimes it just get hard seeing your family members just keep going down that same road, the same road over and over again. And you just keep praying, keep hoping. And it's hard. When you have the antidote and you just wanted to sit them down, take this medicine. I know it's going to make it better. Just try Jesus. I'm not coming here just because I want to. Jesus did something to me. That's why I'm here. And I'm not trying to play church. I'm not trying to be just a, a church. No, 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 no. Something happened to me. Something happened. And I just want what happened to me to happen to you. That's all our heart is, man. I just want what happened to me to happen to you. 
So when that song said at the beginning, I thought these walls would have been fell. By now. I thought by now they would have been in here. I thought by now all what they didn't see, what we didn't walk through, what God then did for us, I thought by now they would be in here. But the song said he's faithful though. And it may not happen when I want it to. But uh, he was patient with me. He was patient with me. And he's a good, good father. And that's why he called us children. And there's a seat for any soul in his house. There's a name of a soul in a chair that belongs to a person in his house. His desire is for all his children to be saved. He said that he would save them. God, we, we all need you. I need you. The children of God need you. We ask that you would just be with us on tonight and if it would be just so kind and gentle just to just show us your glory. We need we need you to lift up that heavy burden. Because we know that you're able you know that you're capable. Come in and sit with us. Lord God, decrease my flesh. Increase your spirit. I don't want to waste your time. I don't want to waste the people of God's time. They need a word from you, not from me. And I don't want to take too much time, God, so I ask that you would make this word potent. Make this word potent. Let it be a sweet aroma in this place. And when it's all said and done, you get the glory for it, God. You and you alone, God, because you're worthy of it, God. You're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy, God. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. It's amazing, God, we serve, y'all. He really is amazing. And I, and, and I was just talking about how hard, you know, this walk is, can be, you know what I'm saying? And this journey, man, is it, it, it's, it's interesting. But tell your neighbor, the walk ain't easy. But there's a reward at the end. There's a reward at the end, y'all. And just thinking about, I don't know if y'all saw in, in, in kind of current news, man, uh, you know, Pastor Tony Evans, you know what I'm saying? Um, that shows you right there, man, this walk is hard. And like Chavis, Deacon Chavis' book, Pray for the Shepherd, man. I pray for our shepherds, bro. You know, and that, that kind of breaks my heart because, not because I don't even care what the action is, not even about the action, because it, to God's eyes, it's all the same level, so I don't care what it is, but I just, I, it's just the fact that, that man, he, he did a lot of good, man. That ball did a lot of good things, you know what I'm saying? And then the time when, when something happened, it's like, that the thing, it's how he said that you could do a, a hundred right things, you know what I'm saying, and do one wrong thing, and they only remember the wrong that you did. So I, I'm like, man, when I see Tony, I think about our pastor, God forbid, you know what I'm saying? But that's why my heart goes out to him. And that's why we gotta pray for uh, other shepherds and other houses, man, because this is kingdom. You understand what I'm saying? This is all kingdom, man. So we just lift up Oak Cliff uh, Bible Fellowship, man. Lord God, do, do a work, do what you have to do, God. Repair, fix, and forgive, redeem, God. Because, man, if Tony Evans not, he not worth his preach, I should be getting down. Because I'm not no Tony Evans. You know what I'm saying? Who is worthy then? 
Who is worthy? Who? The Bible said there's none righteous, no, not one. I don't care who you are, what you, you none of us will be qualified. None of us. So then every, every pastor will have to step down. Because in some area, we, he know. Some area, we, 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 we didn't slip up, we didn't trip, we didn't did something. You know what I'm saying? Man. Ah. Whoo, Hallelujah. All right, saints of God, um, we gonna get in the word tonight. I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. <laughs> hallelujah, Hallelujah. My God. But if you could open up your Bibles, we're gonna be coming out of Matthew, uh, chapter five. And absolutely, first and foremost, man, I gotta give glory to Yahshua Hamashiach, Lord Jesus Christ, Savior of my life, man. He's the only reason I'm up here. Because it, 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 if it wasn't for him, if he wouldn't have came in and showed me who he was, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even be here right now. Not at all. And if it wasn't for Jesus using a pastor, Pastor Omar Tebow, to deliver that gospel to me, I'd have never heard it. I would have never got it because I had heard the gospel before. I grew up in Catholicism. I heard that Jesus died on the cross. You heard these things before, but it didn't do nothing. Well, what was the difference? Why would Pastor Omar say it? It clicked. It was a sign. It, it, was, it was a sign for me to get it. It was a, the, the right season for me to grab hold to. And I have nothing to do with that. Nothing to do with that. I also want to give praise for, for the, the first family as well. Dr. First Lady Chantel Tebow and the whole family. Praying that they're getting some, some much needed rest right now. Hallelujah. I also want to give glory uh, to the first family of the Malvo House, my first lady. I love you, baby. And, um, all right. I think we got it all out of the way. Um, Matthew 5. We're going to be looking at the Beatitudes again. Um, last time I was up here, we was talking about the uh, blessed are the merciful. But tonight, let's just go ahead right to the scriptures. Let's, let's read it. Matthew 5, 3 through 11. The scripture says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Father God, we thank you for your word, God. Thank you for these beatitudes, God. Thank you for this Sermon on the Mount, God, to teach us how to walk this walk out. Thank you for being a great teacher. And God, I ask, God, that you would just fill me up, God. Fill me up with what you showed me, God. Help me to deliver the wit in which you gave it to me, God. I can't do this without you. Without you, I'm nothing. Bless this time in your word. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All right, saints of God, okay. So, I would do a little recap, but it would be a long recap. So I don't wanna recap too long, really. Um, but we last time we had talked about the, um, the poor in spirit. We went through about they that mourn. We covered the meek. We covered do hunger and thirst after righteousness. They gonna be filled. The very last time we talked about mercy. We talked about mercy. And if you 
give mercy, you're going to obtain mercy. All right? Now, we also learn also that word blessed in which and what it means. All right? We talk about you supremely blessed, fortunate, well off, right? Tonight, we want to focus on verse number eight, okay? And that verse, it says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Now, when you look at these Beatitudes, and you begin to read them, blessed are the poor in spirit, you can think about some things about yourself. There's going to be the kingdom of hell. Blessed they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. We can kind of relate to those things, right? Blessed are the meek. You know, we try to be meek. We learn about what meekness really is, you know? It's about submission, submitting to what God wants us to do. Blessed are they with to hunger and thirst after righteousness. They're going to be filled. Blessed are the merciful. We, 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 we learn about the mercy. You know how to kind of operate with in mercy, right? Now, when it comes to this blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That, that pure in heart, I don't know about you, but for me, I was like, oh, God, I, 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 I know my heart not pure. When you know yourself, you know yourself. So when you reading that scripture, it's like, oh, this, 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 man, that's a hard one. Blessed are the pure in heart. Now, this is the sixth beatitude, all right? And remember, when we talk about a beatitude, we say that that is an attitude of the kingdom. And this world has different attitudes of business, attitudes in sports, attitudes in commerce. You know what I'm saying? Well, the kingdom of God has an attitude as well. We call it a beatitude. And tonight, we're going to just do two points, all right? We're going to talk about the pure in heart. And our second point is going to be see God. And point number one is pure in heart. Now, we want to first go back to that word blessed. Last time we talked about that word blessed in the Greek was a word called uh, makarios. Makarios, all right? And it says that is to be happy or happier, supremely blessed, fortunate, well off, all right? Now we're talking about blessed are the pure, okay? Happy or happier are the pure. Supremely blessed are the pure. Fortunate are the pure. Well off are the pure. And when I got, came to the scripture, I, I, I thank God for the, for the Bible, man, because I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I'm not in the Bible every day like that. That's just not, I'm just going to be real with you. I'm not, I don't think, oh, brother, Dick and Jay must be, he must be in the world. All, no, ask my wife. I'm not like that. All right, amen. Amen. It shocks me, though, when it's time to get here and it's time to preach. And you open this thing up and you sit down with it. And you read this thing. I'm telling y'all, there's something supernatural in this thing, like for real. And I'm not just trying to sound cliche or just that that's just some, some, some magical stuff. No, no, no. I sat down, I read that scripture, and I just sat there and just listened. And I don't understand why he would give me and download things to me. He don't have to. He, he sees my, how I roll. He sees my walk. I'm not perfect, man. I'm not worthy to be up here. But then I sit here and I read this text. And he just starts downloading things. I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. I never would have thought. So I know it's not me. It's not my thoughts. He begins to just download things. And he could do that for you too. If we just make some time for him. Now again, we talked about it. It ain't an easy thing. But when it does happen, I praise God for it. Because as I sat here and meditated on that word, Pure. Before I went ahead and, and, and dug up what the meaning of the word pure was, I just wanted to let the Lord download, okay, what, what, what's pure? What comes to my mind when I think about pure? And it made me think about 
children. 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 And I want to ask you a question. Do you remember you as a child? Just pause right now, and I really want you to think about that. You, when you were a child. Because Jesus says something very, very peculiar. You must come to him as a child. Why? Why is that? Why come to him as a child? It's like children, they say, they're so pure. They, 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 they so forgiven. They, they, they let things go. They, they, they don't have animosity. They don't have, they just, they just, they just good. They just, and they're not perfect, but they, they, they good. All right. Before the world starts doing, putting some things in, 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 all right, they come out pretty pure. A child is pure. A child is untouched. A child is unbruised by the world. It, 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 it'll actually go into danger, not even knowing, knowing that, that there's danger, but it would still, just because it seems like it's okay. A child is pure. Everything to a child is important. Can you remember that? Everything matters. Bubble gum matters. A lollipop, it matters. The Ninja Turtles, they matter. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, can y'all remember that? Hopscotch matters. Jump rope, it matters. Everything matters. And also, everything don't matter. Shoes untied, it don't matter. I'm dirty, it don't matter. <laughs> My hair messed up, it don't matter. I'm having fun. A child, a child, a child. Can you remember what it was like when you were a child? Now, I understand, not everybody's childhood was the best childhood. That's just be real and be honest. But I'm not asking you for you to go to the bad parts. I want you to remember the 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 pure parts, because there's some pure parts somewhere in there where you remember when you was a child. A child believes. No matter what you tell them, if you tell them that, they're going to believe it. You tell them they could fly, they can fly. You tell them that they're a fish, they're a fish. You tell them they're a dinosaur, like my grandson liked to be back there, he a dinosaur. It's real to them. It's real. And logic matters not. It don't matter, no. If, you, if they said that, that's what it is, if that's what daddy said, they're going to they believe it, because daddy said. Why can't we be like that? When he says something, why can't we just take hold on to it like a child and just run with it? And just run with it. It's hard. And it's interesting that God calls us the children of Israel. He keeps referring to us as a child, child of God. Saints, can you recall the first time you discern? And you may not even know what the the word discernment was back then. Can you remember the time when you first discerned or, or felt like, oh, that's God? Can y'all remember that? I can remember mine. I, I have two, two occasions. There's two of them. So the first one we had just talked about, um, I grew up in the Catholic church. When I say grew up, my mom took me and said you couldn't take me no more. You know what I'm saying? When she got tired of driving, we just stopped going, right? So it used to be every Sunday, and then it was for the holidays, and then it was for just for Christmas, and then it just fell off as I got older, you know what I'm saying? But I did go through the whole thing of um, um, catechism. Catechism. Y'all remember? Okay. Right. So I went through the whole thing with the catechism, and, you know, they teach you how to, you know, get the bread, and, you know, and the whole meaning of it behind and everything. So when they told me, I remember, I'm a child. So when they told me, this is the, this is the body of Jesus, and when you eat it, it's like he in you. I took it. I was like, 
Oh, wow. So Jesus is going to be inside of me? Oh, okay. So you're a kid, so you just, you take him at their word. So, and I remember, you know, that it was the first time, and I remember I, I, I ate it. And I felt like I felt something, but I can't, I can't articulate what I felt, but I felt like I felt something. And I remember the drive home, it was with my grandmother, and I remember getting home, and I remember like I felt like I felt different. And I remember my neighbor next door, his cousin that came, visit them, and I remember they, they came in the backyard, and I could see it right now, they came in the backyard, and my neighbor introduced me to his homeboy, right? Now we kids, though, you know what I'm saying? We kids, and I go, and, and it, I forgot what his name was, he was like, hey, man, this is my cousin, so-and-so, and I'm like, man, what's up, man, how, how you doing, bro? And it was like a, it was a different me at the moment, I was like, and as it's happening, I'm shaking his hand, like I had grew up or something, and something else was doing it, and like I felt like that was a, a, a um, just a, his presence of, of just kindness that was just there. Because I felt like Jesus was inside of me. All right? Can you remember that first time you felt like, wow, God is real? Now, that was a, that was a kind of a good moment. I'm going to tell you another moment. Now, the second moment was a little different. This was, a little, this was the hand of God saying, uh-uh. So it's summer camp. I might be like, I don't know. Let's say I'm about nine, ten years old. I go to the summer camp. It was the city park summer camp. Now, you know how they take them on field trips. They go to different places, right? Well, they had the car ranch. How many people know about the car ranch? All right, all right. So back then, the car ranch was like, man, I want to go to the car ranch. And Mama Marilyn was like, no, we ain't got money for that. So I wasn't supposed to go to the car ranch. But being a kid and wanting what he want, I said, man, I want, man, man, I'm going to go, I'm going to the car ranch. So one of the, one of the other, 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 little guys, you know what I'm saying, they, they, they paid my way. Now I ain't had no money though, but they paid my way. All right, I didn't understand what paid my way really was. It paid me my way to get there, but not to do a thing. I couldn't go on no ride. I had to literally sit there and watch everybody have fun. Because I wasn't supposed to be there. Now, no, th th that's not even the jammer. Here's the jammer. It's time to leave. I'm like, man, oh, well, you know, all right. I, I, I didn't came. I'm, I'm kind of sad because, like, man, I came all the way in. I ain't get to do nothing. I'm going to go back. So we waiting in, in, in the car ranch. Where the bus at? Now it's 15 minutes, then turn to 30 minutes, then turn to 45 minutes, then turn to an hour. And Mama Marilyn was all, oh, she, got, she picked me up at the same time every day. And what happened was the bus that was supposed to pick us up broke down. So nah, I thought I was going to get back to the camp like nothing happened. But Mama Marilyn get, get to the camp. James not at the camp. What you mean James not at the camp? supposed to be at the camp. Oh. Needless to say, I'm on the bus and I'm looking out the window and I said, that was God. He made the bus break down so I would get in trouble. I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew it was God. Like, like I, it, it, nobody could have told me nothing else different. I was like, God made the bus break down and that's why I'm about to get in trouble and I did get in trouble. I did. But I was like, that was so interesting that I saw the hand of God pushing me, no, you, you're in the wrong, and recognize it. But how many people go through life and they don't see the signs of the hand of God in their life? The tire went off, the, 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 this cut off, this broke, that broke, and you're never understanding and seeing that it was your actions that's causing these things. But we just pass on it like it ain't. We just pass on it. Can you remember when God showed up when you was a child? A child. Now that word pure, y'all, pure in the Greek is a word called uh, kataras. Kataras, is it there? Yeah, y'all say it with me. Kataras. I feel like I got some, some power with it. Kataras. Hey. So, That word 
means several, several things. And we're going we're gonna to break it all down, all right? There's actually three parts to the meaning. There's a physical meaning, there is a Levitical meaning, and there is an ethical meaning when it comes to, to the word pure, okay? So first we want to start off with the physical meaning. And the, I hope I put it up there, right, because I put it in there, and I might, I might have messed it up, but we're going to see. Hopefully it worked right, all right? The physical meaning, the first one, is clean. Oh, okay, we got it. All right, that's cool. It worked. Okay, all right. Clean, to be clean. Now, when I think about clean, a scripture pop, popped into my mind. That, that Psalms 51, 10 through 12, how I go, create in me a clean heart. Oh, God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, let's think about David right here, because why would somebody create in me a clean heart? Well, it almost goes with the whole thing of, you know, why ask to be saved? That means he must be lost. Right? All right. So if I'm asking to be clean, that must mean this heart, my heart is dirty. Do you all know and understand how dirty our hearts are? They said, the Bible said that the heart is deceitfully wicked. You almost can say desperately wicked, like it just wants to think the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, lead you to the wrong way. So David said, create in me a clean heart. You can say, create in me a pure heart. And renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of, the sal of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. David asking for help. And that's the help that we need really every single day, man, because every single day, his heart gets dirty. Now think about, think about them dishes. They just get dirty every day. And you got to do what? Wash them. And guess what's going to happen again tomorrow? When we get dirty again. You wash your truck? I just washed the truck. And guess what? A week from now, you have to wash it again. And I never heard nobody make no new clothes that don't need to be washed, right? That don't work like that. You got to get it washed. And that's just on the physical level. And there's things that, be, that, that are caked on us, man, on our soul, on our heart, day after day, thoughts, actions. And we got to get it clean, man. We got to get it washed. We got to get it washed. The next meaning is purified by fire. Purified by fire or clean by fire. I said, oh, whoa. See, fire is something. Fire will burn stuff off. Fire will purge some things totally off. And when you think about gold, they usually, like, they burn, you can burn gold to get all the impurities out of it. So all you have left right now, what they call it, pure gold. That's what fire does. Now, that reminded me where it says all of our works are going to be tried by the fire. And only what was done, how do you say that? Only for them, what was done for Christ going to remain, right? That's 1 Corinthians 3, 13 through 15. Every man's work shall be made manifest. What is that saying? Everything. <laughs> every man's work, every woman's work, everybody. All your work, everything is going to be made manifest. It's going to be brought, <laughs> it's going to be brought up. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Man. So it's going to ask the question, man, what kind of work are we doing? What kind of work do we have? And are we working? What are we doing? When, what are we doing in regards to the kingdom? We all got to do something. Something. So that it could be put on, on the altar and it could withstand these flames. And I thought about these flames. I was like, man, what kind of flames that is? What kind of heat? What kind of thing that could burn certain works away and only keep what's good? What kind of fire is that? And it made me think about that burning bush. 
That was an interesting fire because it, it was burning, but it was not consuming the bush because the bush was what had a purpose. It was working. It had a purpose right there. And I think it's, that's, that's probably going to be that same kind of fire. God is going to put it right there and see what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. What is it saying right there? If any man's work, if any man's work abide which he had built thereupon. Right here, Paul was talking about Jesus being the foundation. Okay? Jesus is our foundation. So whatever your work, whatever you're doing, the foundation of that, it should be built on Jesus. Whatever it is, it should have something to do with Jesus, some way, somehow. And it can. And, and, and that's, the, that's the purpose of him saving us. You know what I'm saying? He ain't saved us for us to be chilling. He saved us for some work. He saved us for some work. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Now just saying, look, your work will be burned. You're going to suffer some loss if all the things that, that you was working on, that ain't going to... It ain't going to make it, but you still, you, you still going to be saved. Yes, yeah, so as by fire. That fire still got to touch you. All right? And then it made me think about 1 Peter 1, 7. Talking about that fire. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perish it. That the trial of your faith. I say, man, that's the testing of your faith right there. Because our faith is going to be tested. And it should be tested. Because you got to see where, 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 where you at. How, how, how's, how's the faith been coming? How has it been doing? Though it be tried with fire, it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. And I was like, wait a minute. So the first thing I call it is that your faith, you know your faith is worth more than gold. No, you don't. Okay, I don't think you understand quite what, I, what, what, what this is saying. Your faith is more valuable than gold. How is that? And it says at the appearing of Jesus. Because see, right now, it feels like your faith don't, don't really, it's not really worth that much right now at this very present time. Because the value of gold is pretty high right now. You know what I'm saying? And people, they, they bring in the gold here. And, 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 and Fort Knox, they say, got all the gold. But at the appearing of Jesus, when Jesus show up, gold ain't gonna matter. When Jesus come through, gold is not gonna be worth anything. Because to get in, gold ain't gonna get you in. And think about that, gold not gonna get you into a place where the streets are made of gold, so gold not gonna work. He letting us know. Because they could just walk on the gold, the streets made of gold. But there's something else that's more valuable that's going to get you in, and that's faith. And guess what? It ain't even a lot of faith. It's not even an ounce. It's not even a sesame seed. It's a mustard seed. A mustard seed of faith worth way more than Fort Knox that's filled with gold at the appearing of Jesus. When he come, you better have your faith. How is the faith account? And it's okay if it's low, because all you need is a mustard seed, y'all. Come on now. Hallelujah. Now, the next meaning, y'all, for the physical meaning, let's see. It says, like a vine cleansed by pruning and so fitted to bear fruit. Another physical meaning of pure. Like a vine cleansed by pruning and so fitted to bear fruit. And I say, oh, he talking about getting cut. Amen. He talking about getting cut. So now it's like, first you gotta, first you gotta, like you said, the song, so you gotta get to work so you can have some work to put on that, right? And that's a good thing. But then the next part, after you, you're like, you're doing some work and the Lord see that you're fruitful, oh, I'm gonna have to cut you. Why? I want some more fruit out you. So it made me wonder why the walk be hard sometimes. Is that the cutting? Because you're, you're, you're bearing some fruit. So if the walk is difficult, that must mean a good thing, actually. If the walk is getting hard, you're doing something right. 
You're doing something right, because it just might be God just cutting. I want some more fruit. I want some more fruit. I want some more fruit. That looked good. That was a good piece of fruit. I, I, I want big. I want bad. I want juicier. That's what, that's what the Lord want. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm thinking about myself right here in this, so I don't know if this is for y'all, but it's for me. And I'm like, oh, goodness. I don't know about you. I don't really like being cut. I don't like really being cut, but... Whew. John 15, 2 says this, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he take it away. So, man, like we said, it's time to get to work. Like the songwriter say, you got to do something for the kingdom, man. And Jesus also says, continues, and every branch that beareth fruit, he purged it, that it may bring forth more fruit. That's why this walk is hard. That's why this walk is hard. But it's working. Somebody say it's working. It's working. For my good. For my good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Next meaning. We're going to go to the, and this is going to be quick, the Levitical meaning. The Levitical meaning. All right. The Levitical meaning. Now, so when it says Levitical meaning, it would be coming from Leviticus, the book of the law, right? When it's talking about pure. And it goes back to when uh, God gave to Moses and the children of Israel the laws after the exodus from Egypt, right? And there was a lot of things that they were saying that they should stay away from, unclean, clean, right? So this is where we get the whole word pure from because you're saying things, this is clean, this is not clean. That's pure, that's not pure. Stay away from that. Clean, the use of which is not forbidden, imparts no uncleanness. What does that mean? The use of which is not forbidden. He's saying it's okay. That's pure. That's going to be okay to eat. And then the other side was, imparts no uncleanness. It's not going to make you dirty. So that's, that's going to be good. That's what the whole thing with the, with the laws was going on in Leviticus, right? So that's why it gave us a Levitical meaning, which I thought was pretty interesting, right? So continuing on, we're going to go to the ethical meaning. All right? The ethical meaning. We're talking about pure. Talking about pure. Now, first, ethical, let's just get that meaning as well. First, it's talking about moral principles. It's talking about your behavior, how a person behaves. Now, we're talking about pure, so we're talking about pure behavior or <laughs> unpure behavior, okay? Now, the ethical meaning, y'all, talking about pure, free from corrupt desire. <laughs> Just that one off the top is like free from corrupt desire. You know we, we desire some wrong things? Oh, hey, that just be honest and real here. You know what I'm saying? No, that, look, look, we all sinners in here. Me, myself, okay? Corrupt desires. We come into this world on default with some bad desires. Whether it was passed down from generation, whether it was just something that was just, that, that was just the, the thing that we fell into, that's just how it go. Corrupt desires. Also, another meaning for pure, an ethical meaning is free from sin and guilt. Free from sin and guilt. Mm. And all of us are sinners. All of us would be guilty if God were to put it on the stand and show us ourselves. We would see, yeah, we did that. Yeah, that, that is absolutely us. But to be pure, free from sin and guilt. Also, free from every admixture of what is false. And I was like, huh. So that's free from everything that's false. Nothing in them is false. I'm like, man, boy, whoever this person is, boy, this, this is, that's a stellar person right there because I don't fit the bill at all. Sincere, genuine. Now, we could try to be sincere, and we could try to be genuine, but I'm sure we're not 100% genuine, and we're not 100% sincere all of the time. 
This, this, this seems like some, some extreme um, um, places to attain to, right? It seems like, man, that, 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 that's a hard uh, 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 shoe to fill, right? Pure is to be blameless. That means they, they, they can't blame you. Nothing could be put upon you. Innocent. Now, we just talked about we're guilty. So how are we going to be innocent? <laughs> Wait. This sounds like a hard, this, this, man, how are we going to do that? How are we going to attain this? The lastly, unstained with the guilt of anything. Now, that, because see, that's one thing about this walk and this journey. And that's one thing about the world, this flesh, and the enemy. And sometimes that's why I say it get hard because sometimes you, you, you're trying to fight, you're trying to do this, and, and, and it's a struggle, and you, you're going, you, you, you're doing good, and then, and then after, there come the guilt. And here come the devil. I right, look, the whole time it was the devil pushing you to do it. You're trying to, try, then you fall and you do it, and then the devil out there, look, look, I made you do like, what? Now you're feeling the condemnation. Now you're feeling the guilt. But this pure is to be unstained with the guilt of anything. And I'm like, man, Lord, but you said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. It looks like it's pretty hard for me to be pure right here, and it looks like I might not see God if, if, if this is the requirement that you're telling that you're breaking us down with. Because he's sharing this to us for a reason. He's sharing this with us for a reason, but what is the reason? What is he trying to show us about this pure? Well, this person seems like I can't fit the bill. But it sounds like a person I know that do fit the bill. Yeah, it sounds like a person. I know a person that's, 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 that's free from corrupt desires because there was no corruptness found in them. I know a person like that. I, that free from sin and guilt. There was a man, but he wasn't just a man. He was 100% man, but he was 100% God too, and he was sinless. So I know a man that was free from sin and guilt because he, he had done nothing wrong. There was no ill found in him. I know a man free from every admixture of what is false, meaning that there's nothing false in him. I know a man that's like that because he's the truth. And he was set, the truth is set free. He, he is the truth. The light, the way, sincere and genuine. Everything Jesus had said, it was real, it was true, it was sincere, he was honest, and he was genuine. <laughs> Blameless and innocent. He died on a cross, not as a guilty man. He died on a cross as an innocent man. Having done no wrong on his own, no wrong of his own, but went on the cross for the sins of <laughs> all of us. All of us. And he was unstained with the guilt of anything. It had to be a pure sacrifice. That's why it had to be Christ. That's why it had to be God. And the, this is the, the, the beautiful thing about this gospel and why you continue to come to church and why you continue to be in the house of God. Now, there's a lot of things out there in the world that we could believe in. Trust me, I've heard a lot of things, and some of the things sound really good, sound almost convincing, and it worries me because the Bible talks about that even the very elect can be deceived. But I want to remind you of the sweet, sweet deal of the gospel. The sweet, sweet deal of this man and the pureness of his heart. Because his very own statement that he's telling us to do, he saw God. He got himself. But there wasn't there a moment of transfiguration. He had a pure heart. And he's trying to show us how to do that. Justification. You are justified. You are justified. All right? You're justified because we all sinners. God dealt with sin one time. 
one time. All right? He dealt with it. You got a thing called uh, double jeopardy? Well, you can't be charged with the same thing again. All right? Guess where they got that from? They got that from the Lord. Because, see, when he did it on the cross that one time, it satisfied the sins of all mankind from this time until the very end, including everybody then, there, and now in the future. Everybody sins. All right? That makes you justified because he is a just God. What that means is, oh, goodness, that means his death on the cross, not only does it justify you, he, he has to save you. No, he has to. He has to. He has to. He went to the cross, suffered and bled. He has to save you. He can't, he can't skip over you. You can't be skipped over. You can't be passed on. You can't be, be left out and no. You get to get it too. You get to get salvation. You are justified because he is a just God. If he doesn't save you, he will now be unjust. So he saved you completely. Completely. The pure heart now. Point number two. See God. See God. Now we talk about pure we saw that we don't, we, all, all these, these definitions, we don't match that, but it matches Jesus. Amen. It matches Jesus. Now, when we get Jesus, now our desires could not be corrupt because we're not walking on our own accord no more. Jesus <laughs> is on the inside. Jesus on the inside. Now, you got two different things with these definitions, with pure and then to see God. Now, y'all remember, the Bible says no man has seen God and lived. Nobody. Y'all remember Moses? Moses asked, God, let me see. He said, oh, Moses, if I let you see, boy, you're going to fall apart. But I'm going to do something for you. I'm going to put you in the rock. I'm going to let you see my afterburn. Because <laughs> he's on fire. He can't, he can't even see the fire. All you can see is just the burnt crisp of the, of the, of the rock to know that, oh, something passed right there. You shall see God. When you get Jesus, that's when you get pure. When you get Jesus, that is the only way to get pure. Now, what pure is not, I have to say this, because that that, that's a hard qualifications for pure. I have to say this, pure is not perfection. It's not perfection. Ain't none of it. <laughs> it is not perfection. We're not going to attain, no. When we get to glory, yeah. But right now, no, it's not perfection. But I listened to something, and it was very interesting. It said, pure is very similar to a person with the intention of wanting to do good. You have a heart intention to do good, to try. And it made me think about the scripture, you know, when we trying, and then evil is present with me. I'm trying, I'm trying to do good, and then but that's, just, that's just the walk, though, and that's all right. It's not perfection. Pure is not perfection. When you get Jesus to get pure, you get Jesus to get pure to see God. The world, the devil, darkness, and the flesh, that's what blinds us. It blinds us. It puts scales on our eyes. And, and that's why we look at children, they're pure because they haven't been stained with all the things, all the troubles of this world. But as adults, we, we get that, that trouble on us, but there's a way to get that off of us. Amen. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit gives us some new eyes 
some new eyes. And just wrapping it up, y'all. Wrapping it up. The commentary I read, it said that the pure in heart are happy. And if you go around the world right now, do you see people happy on the job, hearing about? No, people, people got some animosity these days, man. Everybody angry, everybody on edge, everybody can look like they got a chip on their shoulder. And it reminds me of something that was a picture I was supposed to show. Maybe y'all could show it right now. It's a picture at the beginning, beginning of the message. Yeah. See that right there? That's, that's, that's the walk right there. Because see, we walking this thing out, and everybody is going that way. Everybody going that way. You go on your job, they going that way. You go to school, they going that way. Everybody's going that road. You, you, with your family, is the reunion, everybody doing the same thing, they going that way. And you're the only one going upstream. You're going upstream. And it looked like that fish, which represents the Christian, is, 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 is by self, right? Look like they're by self. And you know, sometimes it feel like in this, in this walk, because it's hard like that sometimes, sometimes you want to quit. That just be real. You saw the qualifications of being pure? That's, that's, that's pretty steep. That could get weary. That could make you want to faint. And then David almost wanted to faint. Man, I look at the prosperity of the wicked. They doing this and doing that. And Lord, I'm doing these things, man. I'm doing this. I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. And it looked like, and, and they out there cutting up, having a good old time. Ain't worried about nothing. And I'm, I'm your son. And, and it's like, what's going on, Lord? But then David said something. He said, but, but when I understood, when I went to the house of the Lord, and I was reminded of what their end was and what my end was, he rejoiced. This is why you're at church tonight. I'm going to show you why you're at church tonight. See that fish? That fish looks like it's alone. And you, be, you could go through this walk and you could feel like you're alone going upstream by yourself. And it appears like that. And this is the importance of coming to church. Let me show you the next picture. Okay, now, you think you by yourself, but it wasn't until I went to the house of the Lord, and I was around my brothers and my sisters in this walk, and I saw that I'm not the only one going through, I'm not by myself, so the Lord will bring you to church and lift you up so you can see other people in the stream, and they all, we going upstream. The whole world may be going that way, but we all going this way to the Lord. That's why we come to church. Man, the Lord told me that today, man. Because I was like, man, why do we, why, 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 why we keep coming? I mean, for real, why we keep coming? <laughs> I mean, just, just we, we know what's going to happen. We know what we're going to do. We're going to get a word. We're going to see our people. You know what I'm saying? Like, why, why do we do this? We go hear these stories about the word. And we, why do we do these things? Why? Help me understand, Lord, because it's, sometimes it feels a little monotonous. Sometimes it feels like I, 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 I could be making it common. Lord, forgive me, but why do we keep coming to church? And he showed me. That's why he said, forsake not the assembling of yourselves. You don't realize it, but subconsciously, you are being encouraged just by your presence in the building because you see, you're not alone. Somebody else going through this thing too. We all striving, we all trying. And with the help of the Lord, we going to get that. And we're going to get there together. I know there have been many that have walked through those doors that we may not see no more. But it's okay. We're all on a journey. Continue to walk. Continue to go upstream. Don't worry about the, what the world doing. Yes, it's going to get hard. Yes, it's going to hurt. Yes, you should cry. Cry it out if you got to. But come to the house to be encouraged. Hallelujah. You can stand to your feet. Let's stand to our feet, man. Father God, we thank you, oh God. We thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, for your hand upon us, 
for always just being there right on time when we need it, God. You know our hearts. You know the things that, 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 that grieve us. You know the things that, that, that we're pursuing, that we're trying. You know our mistakes. You know everything about us, God. And I'm so glad that you do, God. Because sometimes I don't even know myself sometimes, God. But I'm grateful, Lord God, that you're with us, you're with me, you're with my family, you're with the people of God. And Lord, we need you. We need your strength to keep on going, God. Let us not be a, a, a way down by the waters, by the waves of this world by the waves of our flesh, by the waves of the enemy. Let us not get weary. Help us to keep that armor on, God. Help us to keep going upstream. No matter the affliction, no matter the pain, knowing that in the end, it's going to reap us a great reward. Father, if there's anybody here tonight that don't know you, but wants to know you, God, I pray for them right now. I ask that you would save their soul, God. God, you justified them at the cross, Lord God. You made it possible, Lord God, for them to be redeemed. You made a way, Lord God. Save them, God. And if we could all just raise our hands to the Lord right now for our family members. I know we all got somebody on our heart that we know needs your touch. We know that needs your presence. We know that needs your healing. That may not be in the house tonight, God, but God, you're not bound by a building, God. Your spirit goes to and fro wherever it wants, Lord God, because you own it all, God. Earth can't contain you. Heaven can't contain you, God. God, we lift up our family members to you. Angel of the Lord, go forth. Every angel that's been assigned to us, we command them to go forth, go out, go forth, stretch your wings, go forth out and cast that line, Lord God, and grab those souls and bring it in for the kingdom, God. Let them know that you're there. Let them know that it's going to be all right, that they can come to you. We bind out the enemy off of them in the name of Jesus. We break every shackle, every shackle of darkness, any demonic thing off of our family members in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, do a work in them. Do a work in them. Do a work even greater than what you've done to us, God. We want to see them do great and even surpass us, God. We just want to see them good and saved, God, in the house of the Lord, worshiping you, standing right next to with us, can you see them next to you? Can you see that, that child, that, 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 that husband, that wife, that cousin, that brother, that sister, that uncle, that mama, that daddy? Can you see them next to you? God, we see them, God. We see them worshiping. We see them praising your name. We see them healed, God. And God, we release them to you, God. Because at the end of the day, they are your children, God. We release any weight of it off of us, God. We lay it at your feet, God. Have your way. Do what you do, because you know what it takes, God. We know not what it takes, but you know, God. Father God, as we leave here tonight, God, bless the people of God. Let they return homes uh, better than the, the way they left it, God. Let, they, let them leave refreshed, renewed in their spirit, God. Bless them with shalom, peace. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Saints of God, y'all be blessed. I love y'all. Shalom.